If your ancestors immigrated to America in the 1800s or early 1900s, or their parents did, you should be able to find some useful clues about where they came from in the 1920 census. For people not born in the U.S., you will find the year they immigrated. You will also learn if they were naturalized citizens or if they were applying for citizenship. Let me take you through the 1920 census with the family of Louis Sandoz, living in Fishhook, Washington in 1920. He and his wife are from Switzerland, where they spoke French, as did their parents. They have three children, all born in Washington, and the oldest child was born about 1911. If we were to hazard a guess, we could say Louis and his wife Aline were married in 1908 or 1909. Looking at their citizenship information in columns 13 through 15 might seem a bit puzzling or even wrong. Lewis immigrated to the U.S. in 1888 and was naturalized 12 years later. Aline immigrated in 1904 but was naturalized in 1900. How could that be? Now, it could be an error from when the information was recorded, but most likely when Aline married Lewis, who was already an American citizen, she was given what is called derivative citizenship and therefore was naturalized in the same year as her husband. Your family history friends will be so impressed with your knowledge of derivative citizenship, who knows? It may be a clue in your next crossword puzzle. You will see the codes NA for naturalization, PA, which indicates the person has submitted papers for citizenship, or AL for alien, meaning they have citizenship elsewhere. We can also learn about where Lewis and Aline lived. No street name is given in column one, and this is often the case in rural areas. Column two shows us that a number has been crossed out and replaced with an FM, which tells us the family lives on a farm. They also own the farm, and it is free of a mortgage. On the right side of the census image, we see that Lewis is a grain farmer, and he works on his own account. Column 28 tells us if the person was working on their own or a wage or salaried employee. The education column shows us that everyone in the family could read and write English. None of the children are marked as having gone to school since September 1919, but that may not have been recorded. Looking ahead a page, we see an entry for two teenagers where it is marked, no, they did not attend school. One more thing when you go through your ancestors' 1920 census, take a look at how the census enumerator marked up and filled in the information. His recording habits may yield even more clues than you expect.